In this video, I am going to run through a few ways you can frame a landing. And um, these ways, the standard way of framing a landing with joist, which you will see in this video, is going to be the most common used. But uh, figured I would throw out a couple of different ways that you could, uh, you know, it might be cheaper to build. You might have some scrap lumber on the project. And uh, who knows? One of these just might work for you. So here we have a method where we are simply just using a couple of different walls. If we were going to use 16 inches on center um, spacing, then we might need to add a couple of more walls in if the stairway was going to be wider. So this is about a three foot wide stairway. The walls um, spacing in between, I would imagine, would be about 15 inches. This would be fine for three quarter inch plywood. And here's another method that might work. A wall in the middle and a couple of walls on the outside. The only thing with this is you're going to need to center the stud in here so that you can nail the wall framing in the center to the stud. You could always have the plates overlap too uh, if, if you needed to. So here we have the top plate overlapping over this wall. We would nail down with a couple of 16D nails to connect all of this together. You could do the same thing here. But I don't, don't really think it'd be necessary. Remember, the plywood is going to tie everything together. When you're nailing the plywood into these top plates, nailing down, you're going to be nailing down into this. The plywood will hold um, all of this together once it has been um, nailed. And there's the stairway. Another view of it there. And of course this is the most common method where we have the joist sitting on top of the framed walls. And if I was going to say which method would I use, this would probably be it. It is the tried and true method, and I have been using this one for quite some time. And of course, the joist might need to run in the different direction. So you can run the joist in this direction, or you can run the joist in this direction, which you'll see here in a few seconds. Voila, there it is. The joists are running in the other direction. Just don't forget that the grain of the plywood usually runs perpendicular to the joist. And for those of you who don't know, if we have a, let's just say we have a four foot wide by eight foot piece of plywood, the eight foot long direction is going to need to run perpendicular to the joist. So you would run the eight foot long piece in this direction that would cross over the joist. And again, you can run it in different directions. I've read a lot of stuff on plywood and I don't want to get carried away in this video on it, but uh, check with the manufacturer to verify the information I am providing you with in the video stairway. So again, the preferred method I would say from me. Next up on the list, you might run into a situation where you're going to need to use smaller lumber. Now, in this situation for this stairway, that is not going to happen. But I figured I would show you a method. I've done this before in tight spaces where I might have had a closet underneath the stairway and underneath the landing. And if that's the case, you might just need to, sp uh, you could use two by four, which we have here. And these are spaced six inches on center, not 16 inches on center, six inches on center. And you might need to check with your, um, the lumber manufacturer to make sure that these distances would be approved for your stairs also. Now here's a method that, uh, you know, will work, but uh, might not be approved by your local engineer. And that would simply be to nail a scrap piece of lumber onto the framing studs. And of course this could run full length. And then this would be used instead of a hanger to, uh, or a ledger I should say, to support the joist. And of course you could always toenail the joist into the framing plates for some uh, more strength. So this is probably the stinker on the list, but thought I would throw it out there. You never know, you know, you nail like a two by eight or a two by 12 underneath here, 
and uh, you put about uh, four nails into the studs, set something on top, nail the plywood off and uh, the plywood's going to hold all of this stuff in place and it's probably going to be a pretty strong landing and again i'm using two by four here you might want to use two by six or two by eight to uh, whatever will work for the span or the length of your particular landing and in our last example you could use top flange hangers frame the top plates like this and another thing you could do even though i don't have the video suggestion in here because the plywood like I said is going to act as your connector you can actually lose the top framing plates and uh, um, use top flange hangers something like that to save you a few dollars on your framing so top flange hangers again might be the way to go the only thing that I don't like about the top flange hangers and I've had a lot of problems with them I should say when we use something like this for panelized roofs it's the fact that they usually stick up a little bit and when you go to nail everything um, you could have a bump in the plywood or the sheathing and that's not always going to be the preferred method for something where you're trying to create a nice flat landing so that is it for the video hope you like it if you do you know what to do hit the old thumbs up button and uh, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or even video suggestions in the comment area. Questions and comments I will address as soon as possible.